In this session, we'll be detailing you about how reproduction takes place in fungus. So we look forward, the fungus can reproduce with the help of vegetative reproduction. It can also reproduce with the help of what you call asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction is also present. But most of the time when fungus reproduces, it reproduces with the help of spores. So we'll have to see what type of spores are produced in which particular phase of fungus. Now when you talk about vegetative reproduction, so vegetative reproduction, all the modes are seen, fission, fragmentation, budding. Now remember budding is basically seen in needs, budding is just seen in what you call unicellular organisms. So what happens in budding or fission, the unicellular fungus, which as I've already told you is yeast, will be forming the bud and this bud will be growing and will be separating. When you talk about fragmentation, so fragmentation will be for mycelia. Mycelia means multicellular hypha. Now multicellular cells or multicellular organism, so multicellular organism will be dividing into fragments and each of these fragments will be pre preparing a new fungus. Now what happens in asexual reproduction? So in asexual reproduction, fungus reproduces with the help of spores. So you have different kind of spores produced. If you can look, sporangia spores, conidia or oidia. Now sporangial spores are always endogenous. Endogenous means they are packed in some cavity. And in this particular what you call cavity or in this particular structure, the sporangial spores, so that cavity or that particular, you know, the uh, body, it's called sporangia, where they are produced. So sporangium will be, a sporangium or sporangia will be the part where sporangial spores will be forming. So they are always endogenous. There are two types of sporangial spores. One is called zoospores, one other is called aplanospores. So what happens in sporangiospore? They are produced inside some cavity, inside some structure. So they both are endogenous. Now what is the difference? One is motile, another is non-motile. So aplano, plano means they can move. Aplano, they cannot move. They don't have flagella. But when you talk about zoospore, they have the flagella. Now the flagella can be one, the flagella can be two. Now what happens in zoospores? Zoospores are also produced inside that cavity. Aplanospores are also produced inside that cavity. Both of them are endogenous, but one is motile, which is zoospore. Another it's non-motile, which is aplanospore. Remember these differences. When you talk about conidia, so conidia are formed on conidiophore. Like that they are formed on sporangiophore. They are formed on conidiophore. And on the conidiophore, they will be coming in the form of chains and that too exogenous. They don't have anything which is binding them, which is covering them up. Both of them are endogenous, they are exogenous. One among the differences between sporangiospores and conidia. The both of these are endogenous and this is only the exogenous, uh, what you call spore form. Now when you talk about, they are also non-motile. So they are also non-motile, they are also non-motile. Only they particular, what you call spores, are motile. When you talk about the third spore happening in fungus, which is called oidea. Now oidea are non-motile thin walled spores. Those are developed under sugar rich conditions. So this particular spore, the fungus will be forming when it will be getting sugar rich condition. Especially this stage is called torula stage. In next session, I'll be detailing you about the different kind of asexual methods happening in fungus and the idea about the spores.